In this lesson, I want to jump back into Craft 3 and look at how we can install, set up, and configure it all from the command line. So let's jump in and see how we can do that. Now, the first thing that we need to do is get Craft installed. Now, in Craft 3, we are going to do that via Composer. So first, we want to make sure that we have Composer installed. If you don't, check out my video on installing Composer as well as on uh, installing Craft with Composer. But we'll run through that really quickly. So we're going to do Composer, Create Project, Craft CMS dash Craft. And we're going to install it in our current working directory. And as I record this video, it's still in beta. So we will pull down the stability for beta. And so now it's installing. All right, and we get this nice craft CMS welcome screen. And as you can see, down at the bottom, it says, welcome to craft CMS. Run the following command if you want to set up craft from your terminal. And that's exactly what we want to do. And it's craft setup. So I'm going to do dot slash craft setup. First thing it asks me is, what is my database driver? Well, I'm going to use MySQL in this chance. And then it's going to ask me for the database IP address. In this case, it's 127.0.0.1. I'm using MAMP Pro, and I know that my port is 8889. My username is root, my password, and the database name is craft CLI, just a test database for this lesson. Prefix, uh, we're going to leave that blank, so we're not going to have any prefixes. This will be a database that is only for craft, so we don't need to prefix the tables at all. All right, so it tested our credentials. It saved those credentials to our .env file, so our environment file now has those credentials in there automatically. We don't have to edit that ourselves. And are we ready to install Craft? Yes. So let's see, admin could be our username and the email address and the password. And we'll confirm. Site name, Craft, CLL, test. Site URL is Craft, CLI dev, language is English, and it flies by as it is configuring craft, and there we go. It has successfully set up craft for us. So now if I go to my browser and I go to craftcli.dev, okay, and I also want to make sure that I am pointed at the web directory, which is the public directory. I'm in MAMP Pro right here, so I want to make sure that is set. One of the things that we run into with Composer is that if we try to install Craft using Composer in a directory that is not empty, Composer will complain. So if I went ahead and created that web directory and then pointed Map Pro or uh, Valet or whatever it is that we're using for local hosting there already, then it would complain. So I just have an empty directory and I just go back and point it to web. And now if I go to my browser, go to craftcli.com, dev slash admin, you can see we are now presented with our control panel login. Put in the credentials that I use when I was in the command line. And then here we are, craft is installed and configured. And you can see it has the information that I put in when I configured it via the command line. So that's how easy it is to install and configure craft all from the command line. One other thing that we can do from the command line is install plugins. So let's see how that works. So I'm here on the GitHub page for the Amazon S3 plugin for Craft. Now one thing to note is that remote assets in Craft 3 now require plugins. So you would need a plugin for Amazon, for uh, Google, for what are all the other ones that are available. So for Amazon S3, we need to download this plugin. So we can do that from the command line. We can say composer require craft CMS and then AWS S3. So back here, I'll put that in. So we're going to add that to 
uh, our required dependencies for this project, which is important. That way, when it's rebuilt on another machine, it will include that. And now, if I go to craft and then help, you can see we have some help here, and one of them is install slash plugin. So let's do craft install slash plugin, and then we need to put in the name of the plugin. And there it is, AWS S3 successfully installed. Back in our control panel, if I go to settings and then to plugins, you can see it is here and it is already installed. So why does setting craft up and installing plugins from the command line really matter? Well, first of all, it means that it's scriptable now, especially if you need to do things on deploy. Let's say you need to install plugins every time you deploy, maybe for a special environment. Maybe it's a plugin that runs a test or does something special in a certain environment. It's nice to be able to run that from the command line via a deploy script or some other, you know, post receive script or whatever it is. Now the developer that came up with the plugin install from the command line, Mark Hewitt, that was his actual use case. He needed to get a plugin installed on the server environment and he didn't want to have to log into the control panel every single time. So he created this functionality, did a pull request, and then it was merged into craft and is now part of craft. So check out both setting craft up from the command line, which is dead easy, and then also if you need it, you can now install plugins from the command line as well. Thanks for watching. I'm Ryan Ireland from Majingo.com and I'll see you on the next video.